Recovery is stupendous. Achievable. Hope. Freedom. 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 Empowering. It's unique to everyone. It's a journey, not a destination. Getting a new lease on life. It's finding restoration after you fall down. Recovery is having the freedom to enjoy life. For me, it was finding a way to really love myself. My recovery is possible in part because of my own sense of purpose. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Recovery Talks Podcast. I'm Andy Daniel, Social Media Coordinator with MPN, and I'm here with Brent and Amanda to talk about our new peer coaching series. Welcome. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, Andy. So tell our listeners a little bit about yourselves. Well, my name is Brent Morris. I live in Billings. I'm a peer services coordinator. I've at MPN for a short time, kind of new for a couple of months is all. I'm in recovery. I deal with some anxiety and depression. That's about a little bit, a little bit about myself. Thanks, Brent. Amanda? Hey, everyone. My name is Amanda Walton. I am also a peer services coordinator with MPN. Brent and I started right around the same time, the end of October of last year. I'm excited to be a part of the, of the MPN organization. I have been in recovery for several years now. I have a history of co-occurring behavioral health diagnoses and a lifetime of of experience in in that realm. I'm excited to be a part of of MPN's mission. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, It's great to have you guys on board with us. And you're here to talk about our new peer coaching series. And we kind of started putting that together last fall, but we're really going to hit it hard starting Monday, actually. So can you tell me a little bit about what that series is? So the peer coaching series is a four session course we'll provide over four different evenings in January. It is basically an inter- uh, people that are interested in learning the basics of the peer coaching uh, rather than even rather than going for the peer certification of uh, 40 hour course. Amanda, anything else? Yeah, I, I definitely can add to that, Brent. Thanks. So it's an introduction to providing support services for, as Brent mentioned, those individuals who either are not yet qualified to receive a peer support certification or who are not ready or wanting to go that direction and just want to, to give back as they move through their own recovery journey. We have a couple of dates coming up. As Andy had mentioned, we start next Monday, January the 11th, and we meet the 11th and the 13th, and then the following week, the 18th and 20th, one segment per per meeting. Our, Our goal is to open the doors and provide foundational information and perhaps even guidance to individuals who, say, for instance, you're just released from incarceration and you may not qualify because of the time frame that you have been out of uh, the system, but you still want to be involved and move forward in your own recovery while you offer support to others because you've gained a wealth of knowledge and experience dealing with some specific obstacles that individuals that are systems um, systems involved may face. And peer coaching is one way that you can be introduced to that, um, ethical delivery, trauma-informed care, healthy boundaries, and then of course the importance of self-care within our own lives as we reach out and support other individuals. So uh, that's a great, Amanda, thank you. So in doing this also, this introductory course of peer coaching series is a good way to um, self-confidence, kind of the awareness of some of of your own boundaries too needed and some of the trauma you may have experienced in your life. A lot of these important factors when you're working as a peer, we share our lived experience and we're teaching from our lived experience. So in doing this and working with others, things can come up and as a surprise or not expected, not expected and um, trigger, gonna bring up some emotions that we weren't ready to have to deal with that day. So the debriefing, self-care and trauma are great tools that work together as the the four, the four different days will work together and they kind of mold together 
to become a street building as for us and the but awareness that type of thing. So you've mentioned that there are four different trainings. Amanda, can you tell us a little bit about what the first one, the what is peer coaching training includes? Absolutely. So what is peer coaching is the foundation that we build on for the for the remaining three segments of the series. And it's going to provide you information on, you know, basics on what recovery is, what peer coaching and peer support is and the different levels and how it may be similar to or different from other supports that we are familiar with, such as sponsors in AA and NA, other 12-step programs, community mentors, that kind of thing, uh, because there is, there is a difference, you know, and once we go into the peer dynamic in our, in our personal and professional experience, we, we choose to adhere to specific ethics when we are delivering our services. And we, we want to learn about professionalism and how we can best provide support for other individuals while maintaining the maintenance phase of our recovery and being aware of the traumas that other people experience, being aware of how our traumas have, have uh, impacted our lives and then impacted the way that we interact with others uh, when we're providing support. We, what is peer coaching is a very, um, it, it's a brief touch on each one of the other segments as an introduction to what kind of supports can be offered and where you can go as a peer coach on your own journey. Great. Brent, can you tell us about the second one? The one on Wednesday, the 13th is about healthy boundaries. Yeah, thank you. Healthy boundaries is Wednesday, January 13th at 6.30 p.m. It kind of um, introduces us and has kind of a, an eye-opener for us to be aware of the boundaries we should have set for ourselves and doing working with others, helping others. These boundaries are used formal, informal setting. And the boundaries can be, we learn boundaries as we go. So in, you know, as a man is sure about the introductory to peer, peer coaching, so some of us, it'll be new, it'll be a new experience, helping others, understanding how to show our lived experience and use our experiences to help others. And those boundaries, healthy boundaries will be a, a kind of a guard for us, not allow some of the other people's experiences, other people's actions and that type of thing to um, get in our comfort areas, maybe a trigger. So the third in the series is trauma-informed support. Amanda, can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So when we are providing support to another person, it is always important to remember where they may have come from while we are working to meet them where they're at because where they're at now is always impacted by things they've experienced in the past, whether or not they realize it. And the same goes for us. When we're providing trauma-informed support, we are aware of the impact of trauma in our own lives, the way we respond to other people and situations because of the trauma in our past, and we are aware that the people that we are supporting have likely had similar experiences. You know, I mentioned earlier just the scenario of incarceration and providing support once you're out of the system involvement. People often don't realize that the things that we experience are trauma. For instance, incarceration. I have personal lived experience with that. Fortunately, it's a part of my life I've, I've moved past, but I didn't really take into account until relatively recently that that whole experience was an additional trauma. Oftentimes we take a look at our, our life and the things that we've been through and oh, well, that was just a consequence to a choice or it, it happened, it's whatever. And we don't really take the time to be aware of how we feel through it and 
what what impact we may have emotionally because of those experiences, no matter what they are. And we all respond to trauma in different ways. And you know, we re we respond reasonably to unreasonable experiences and situations. And then we tell ourselves that our response is what is unreasonable. And that's that's a misperception that we have to look at and change as we move forward. And realizing that the impact that trauma has had in our own life is what allows us to take another by the hand, so to speak, and walk through the experience with them, walk through past experiences with them so that we can guide them to a better right now, a better present experience. Right. So the last one is debriefing and self-care. Brent, can you tell us a little bit about that one? Yes, I can. So the debriefing and self-care is Wednesday, January 20th. And and the fourth session this is the fourth session. It'll kind of fall into place. Some of the, the tools we've learned, the activities we're going to be doing with others and things like this. So after we help others, we have to kind of unpack our experiences, kind of relax and debrief that the term debrief to help us get ready for the next day, share our experiences with other people. It could be a, could be a workmate, could be a supervisor, that type of thing. When we're sharing, you know, there may have been, and this will go back to the previous sessions. There may be a boundary that was crossed by someone we're helping. There might be a trauma that we've experienced ourselves and the, and the, the boundary was pat, was crossed. The trauma was tr become a trigger. And there's some, you know, that day or that event may have brought about a lot of some anger, some fear, different emotions for ourselves. So in the debriefing, we could do a, you know, kind of a talk, de-escalate, you know, and even by sometimes, but just talking about some of the times in our lives, going through the talk and the story will help us be able to cope and understand some of the positive ways to look at it, see it now as being a threat to us, that type of thing. And part of this pro this last session too is a self-care. It can involve maybe simply yoga, some other, you know, walking, listening, you know, to music, art, you know, the self-care is important for us to continue our healthy, balanced life, you know, and living healthy. Both of these in this section, the debriefing and self-care are essential to continue working as a peer coach. And then as we'll roll into also um, those that will follow this for certification, these, these last tools are definitely very necessary to continue again, the balance, balance in our lives and living healthy in our recovery. So early in this podcast, you both kind of touched on the certification and that this is not a training that leads to certification. Can you expand on that a little bit? I'm going to let Amanda do this because she is a certified peer, actually. Thanks, Brent. Uh, so a lot of times we want to give back. We want to be a part of sharing our experiences with others because we've come to the understanding that we can provide meaning to our experiences, positive meaning to our experiences um, by sharing the wisdom that we have learned and the tools that we have learned to help other people and also in turn continue to help ourselves. To become a certified peer, Support specialist requires a 40 hour training licensure by the State Board of Behavioral Health, which, depending on your past experience, can take a little bit of time. It also includes keeping up with clinical supervision requirements, documentation requirements, et cetera. And the peer coach does not have to do that. This is a step that you can take prior to going to that level. Uh, one of the requirements with the Board of Behavioral Health uh, mandated by the state is that you have to be in stable recovery, having no hospitalizations or incarcerations over 72 hours within the two years 
immediately prior to applying for a peer support license. Uh, with, with peer coaching, you can pick it up and decide to, to start the journey of supporting others at any time. You aren't confined by length of time in recovery, although you know it is recommended that, that you have the desire and the drive to be a support to others so that you do not become an obstacle to yourself or anyone else. It's also a bit different because a lot of times, you know, if, if we are involved with various systems, um, probation, parole, behavioral health, we, we go to support groups, um, groups that are recommended by our counselors, by various individuals um, within the Department of Corrections, et cetera. And peer coaches aren't bound by certain specific steps. It's not bound by a specific book. We recognize that recovery is possible for anyone and everybody's recovery journey is different. It takes many forms. And so it's a very, it's a very good foundation to what is expanded upon in the 40 hour training for peer support that you would have to go through to become a peer support specialist. And it's a very good opportunity for you to give back and as I mentioned before, you know, be able to use your experiences and the collective knowledge of your past to support somebody else as they begin or continue on their recovery journey as well. It's a great way to identify with other people and get your foot in the door, so to speak, when it comes to wanting to go down the road of peer specialist or LAC, you know, whatever your future goals are. This is a very good place to start. Oftentimes we, we have the belief that we are held back by our experiences. We are defined by um, diagnoses, various things that, that are barriers within our own minds of what we can do. And when we realize that, that it doesn't have to be that way and we can actually rely on the very experiences that we've been held bondage by to move forward in our lives and create something beautiful and meaningful for ourselves and other people, it, it, it really, it's a game changer. It, it changes our perspective and the way that we see ourselves, our past and our future as we work through our present. Brent, who do you think could benefit from taking this training? Um, I believe someone who is, has considered the peer certification unsure if they want to go to that level and um, apply for state licensure. Someone who is not eligible for the uh, certif certification because of um, criminal record, time of um, incarceration, time from being in a mental hospital, that type of thing. The peer coaching can be used simply even, even as a volunteer, working other organizations as a, the basic resource development, that type of thing, just the working with people, behavioral health issues, that type of thing. But again, as Amanda was saying, it's not near the expectations and level of support as the certified peer is. So again, just if you're unsure or not confident or just want to test the waters or you know other eligibility reasons, it's a good fit. There is no charge. And for um, if the people cannot finish all four sessions in you know, the two weeks, they could pick up at the following time when the course is offered in the next next couple months. So this will be an ongoing series, right? We're not just going to offer it in January and be done. It'll come up <clears throat> several times during the year. Yes, it'll be con it'll be continued probably every, I believe, month, month and a half or so. We're not sure. So you can always find that information on our website at mtpeernetwork.org uh, slash trainings, or you can click on the events calendar and you can see all of those trainings that are there. Thank you, Brent and Amanda, for joining me today. If people have specific questions about the training, how can they get a hold of you? They can contact me at brent at mtpeernetwork.org or 406-224-3826. And I can be reached at amanda at mtpeernetwork.org 
or 406-224-3898. Thanks again to both of you. This is an exciting thing that we've got that we're starting off here to try to meet the needs of more of our members. Thanks for joining us on this Re Recovery Talks podcast, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks, Thanks. Andy. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works, recovery is possible. Recovery is possible. <laughs> recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery is possible.